Hi, Mark here from the Tangibound Podcast Network and host of the flagship show, The Tangibound Podcast. Did you know that we over at Tangibound are always looking for amazing podcasts to promote? And did you also know that we are also proud nerds and geeks of everything from movies, music, gaming, TV shows, and comic books to wrestling, MMA, soccer, and football? Whatever you can nerd or geek out about, we've got it. And if you're interested, we can help you find it. And if you're a show looking for a place to call home, we've got you covered. Side effects may include upset stomach, dizziness, tumors, shakes, and in some rare cases, death from excessive laughter. Though to be fair, it's only sometimes. Other side effects may include diarrhea, gallstones, heart palpitations, and strong desire for cookies on the dark side. Talk to your doctor and visit TangiboundNetwork.com and see if Tangibound Network is right for you. We're not doctors, therapists, trained professionals of any kind, so if you feel you do need help, please reach out uh, and get the help you need. We have a whole list of things on our files page over on Facebook at facebook.com slash crazylifepodcast, and, uh, or just search on the internet for the suicide prevention hotline number, or um, go to nami.org, or um, whatever resource you can find. But just please reach out for help if you need it. If you feel as though you're going to harm yourself or others, definitely reach out. And try not to be alone. Uh, also, if you uh, feel that way and you realize that you're writing a note or making plans of how you would do, uh, like harm yourself or others, definitely reach out. That's a huge red flag. And uh, lastly, please do not um, re- replace the idea of therapy with listening to this show. Again, if you need help, please reach out and uh, get the help that you need or contact us. We can try to help you find the help that you need. A light sucks to the last drop. Are you going to blow your head off? Take good aim and don't forget to duck. A light sucks every Monday and all the way to Sunday. What's up or how's it hanging? I'd like to buy this world one last drink Life sucks all of the time Stick it up your sunshine And then you'll see the clouds every day And then you'll see the clouds every day And then you'll see the clouds Welcome to The Crazy Life, everyone. My name is Jen. I am your hostess for the evening. And with me, as always, we have Brian and Heno. Hey, guys. Yo. Hey, back at full strength, finally. <laughs> it's been like six months since all well, three of us were on an episode together. <laughs> it has been a little bit, hasn't it? <laughs> it has been a while, yeah. Over-exaggerator. Slightly. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's been like a month, but... You know. Yeah, because it hasn't been all that long no. because all three of us were present <laughs> when we had our guest. Yeah, but that's that's been three, four plus we skipped a week. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's probably mm-hmm. been a month and a half or so, roughly. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah, it's Time's been a minute. Been flying by. Yeah, with all the exciting fun of quarantining and yeah. <laughs> curfews and all this other great stuff. Yep. Uh, what are you gonna do? I know, right? Um, well. The rules are rules, so yes, I will. They are. Yeah, they are. That's that is accurate. Rules are rules. Yeah. Yep. Rules are rules. You know? Rules aren't butterflies. They're rules. <laughs> I disagree. Fake news. So, yep. Last week, um, and my my mom officially made it into town. Yay! Yay! So she, um, yeah, a little bit interesting, um. The whole closing on the condo because it there was just some complications and waiting for some signatures and so things got delayed and then she was in a hotel for a couple of days because she didn't have a place and mm. it just got a little crazy. Now, out of but... curiosity, like not that I'm <laughs> trying to get up in her business or spill any of her info oh, no. or whatever, but like did she did she pull a treat yourself moment for the hotel? 
No. Ah, uh, see, that's a great example to just spoil yourself for like a couple days or something. Well, normally yes, but she had two dogs and a bird with her. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. Never mind. Yeah, that would yeah, that's a whole different. Fancy hotels won't allow that. <laughs> yeah. All right. Dang. So, you know, because otherwise that kids. that's seriously like a get a nice hotel, maybe get room service. You know, just yeah. take something out of the mini bar just because you can. You know, <laughs> she was room service. That's what that's what happened. Yeah. But. So every night after work, I'd swing by and pick up some food and drop it off, you know, and, and spend a little time with her and stuff. But right. um, so last week, so she ended up once she signed on the condo, um, we delivered a mattress because she didn't want the full bed. She just wanted the mattress. So we delivered her a mattress and a bunch of blankets and stuff. And so she's been camping out on the floor until her actual furniture and stuff arrives mm. Um Started to arrive yesterday, and the other one arrives on Thursday. Mm. So nice. she's all excited. She's you know getting new carpet put down today, and so you know just the little stuff. You know she had a woman come by and um, give her a quote on taking wallpaper down and doing some painting, mm. and she's just really getting to the point that she's enjoying. Um, this is the first time that she's ever been the sole decision maker. Yeah. That she didn't have to check with anybody else and take somebody else's opinion into consideration. She is the only person that gets to make these decisions. And I think she's, instead of being afraid of it, she's actually embracing it and That's kind cool. of enjoying the the whole process of just kind of being her own person. And That's really, and do it. I'm sure, I don't know if you remember, like when my mom was going through that, Jen, mm -hmm. you know, like um, it, it, it's it the 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 situation that caused it is sad but it's yes. great when you can find it it becomes the silver lining essentially is it's like hey i never got to do this so now you have that opportunity like you said i can decorate how i want to i can be crazy if i want to or unleash a side of me that maybe the other person you're with is like eh, you know like someone like me i could go full nerd you know, mm -hmm. where somebody that's with someone might be like, okay, we don't need all this Spider-Man in the living room, you know? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> exactly. You know? So she's gonna, she's really, and she's, she's got enough uh, cushion that she doesn't have to, she has to be careful, of course, sure. you know, we all have to monitor our budgets and stuff, but she's got enough cushion because she got such a good price on the condo that kind of gives her some flexibility to be able to do the little stuff um, that she wants to do. Like she wants to put a heater in the three season room and stuff like that, mm -hmm. that it's, it's a little more expensive than and not hundred percent necessary, mm -hmm. but enough to make it her own place and yeah. uh, feel like home. So, yeah. so yeah, so things are going good. good. So that's what I was uh, doing last week was helping her out. In the meantime, at work, <laughs> one of the women um, I work with, unfortunately, um, came down with COVID. And so I got uh, the call and stuff. So I've got to go get tested and all that great jazz. Good news, I don't have any symptoms. So I should be fine. Um, I think I'm fine. So I, you know, I'm not too concerned um, at this moment about my state of affairs. Um, and she seems to be doing fine as well. So, um, Good. you know, all in all, not, not a horrible thing. Just, yeah, inconvenient. just, just, uh, yeah, she was fortunate and hopefully, you know, as, as yep. you said, you've been fortunate as well. So that's, that's good. Exactly. But just wear your masks, folks. I mean, I, I that's all we got right now. Yeah. I, you know, that's, that's literally all we have to protect ourselves is masks and distance, distance. It. and distance yes and distances yes yeah and that being said next week i'm gonna get yelled at for this yep but i i am hosting a thanksgiving dinner why i oughta yeah I know. it's it is it's 10 people yeah. Instead of instead of self quarantine for two weeks because you were in close contact with a positive test person, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't want to. But I didn't say that. No, technically it would be fourteen days since I was in contact with her because it was last Tuesday when I was in contact with her. Yeah. So I'm over right. the. 14, I, I'll be past the fourteen days. Right. 
So I did take that I, into consideration. I'm just glad. Like, I'm not going to lie. When you first mentioned to us that you were going to get a test, and in my head, I'm I'm sitting here going, boy, if the word, next words out of her mouth are, I'm getting this test because I'm having a Thanksgiving get-together, this is going to be one of those times I might lose it. Because I was reading about that earlier, that there are idiots out there just going to get tested just so they can justify being around a bunch of other people next week and it's like come on like what more do you like these numbers are not going down they're spiking if you look at canada's numbers after their thanksgiving their numbers rocketed up ours is going to be worse because we listen worse than they do yes sir. we don't distance we do whatever we want because we're americans you know and whew. so yeah. i implore anyone it, please don't have gatherings but if you're going to please Please, please, please wear your masks when necessary and stay as far away from everyone as possible. You know, look up safe ways for serving and stuff like that so you don't have everyone's grubby paws on everything. <laughs> I watched the thing and yesterday. It was on um, oh Inside Edition, and they were like, oh, here's how to have a safe Thanksgiving. And they show people in line. They're all wearing their masks in the line. And I'm like, okay, right. But then I see they have one serving spoon, and I'm like, you should have, <laughs> like, I should use That's a spoon funny. and it should go to the table with me. The next person's spoon should go to, you know, like, you should basically carry up your silverware, use your silverware, and then out the door. Yeah, you yeah, shouldn't be using. dedicated. Yeah, yeah or you have tough. one person who just serves everybody, <laughs> you know, like, I was like, uh, <laughs> I just well, love. I'm going to serving. We already covered it. Yeah. But yeah. I just love on that how, it, like, you know, they're like, oh, this is so safe. And I'm like, you know, it's funny is they're claiming how safe it is, but they didn't have an expert on it any point validating the safety of what they were talking about. You know? Right. <laughs> I was like, uh-huh. Anyway, I know I'm paranoid about it and stuff, but like I said, just please be safe to everybody who is doing it. And again, and you we know. Doing in, we're doing it in a 40 by 60 pole barn. Yeah. So we're doing out in the barn. We're putting together three large tables for 10 people. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I'm going to be doing the serving. I'm going to serve with my mask and on and um, gloves. Yeah. And then I'll be the only one touching the serving utensils. So I'll be doing the serving. Yeah. So uh, ten, 10 people total. Mm -hmm. That's a good number. Yeah. Yeah. So it's not, I mean, usually our Thanksgiving dinners are 15 to 20. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So we, we're really, you know, just having the parents and a couple other people um, come we do have people who are who are very uh, um, high risk. Yeah. So we're just going to have to be as careful as we possibly can. Yeah. Well, the thing on those situations, and I don't want to sound cold, but in my my opinion on that is that people who are high risk should not be going to these kind of things. That I don't feel as much that like not that you shouldn't still take all precautions, you know, but it's like. If someone in that situation ends up getting sick, it's like, well, why were you there? Like, I don't want to victim blame, but at the same time, I kind of, you know, mm -hmm. like, if you're high risk, please stay away from big gatherings. It's just, it just increases your chances, you know, please, like I said, just please be safe. It's just, it, it's a, it's a tough call. And here's why. Because a lot of the people that I'm going to be having Thanksgiving dinner with mm -hmm. are, um, you know, are higher up in age yeah. and they have had some health issues and things like that. And we've had quite a few um, deaths this year in the mm. family. Yeah. And it's very difficult to not want to be together during these times of years, you know? So that's where it gets really difficult. So you have, cause you don't know how many more years you're going to have left. And when you see, oh, uh, I, I got to call BS on that part, and, and I have to. I'm sorry, but but you can't argue that it's a good idea to get together during a pandemic because you don't know how many years someone may have left. You're putting yourself in a higher risk to not be around in the future versus being safer and playing the odds. <laughs> like, <laughs> I, can't, I can't accept that from but, anybody. But, I mean, there's only so many playing the odds that you can do. Yeah, but... You this don't is, get. I mean, it's not just if you play it safe your entire life and you do everything right. This is no. See again, you can't argue big picture versus 
one situation. That this is a situation where we have a pandemic going on. This mm-hmm. isn't this isn't the normal, oh, I might get a cold. Like this is something that could kill you. You could easily spread it to other people. It could kill other people. This is not a this is not a situation to where it is. And all it comes down to is people wanting to get together to have dinner. Like it's just not a good enough reason. It's well, just I, not. We'll have to respectively, and I hate to say, agree agree to disagree. No, because... this this comes down to logic versus emotion. This is a perfect example of all the times we've talked about it on this show. I don't agree with that. I think I'm coming at it with quite a lot of logic. Scientists agree feel... with me. So, like I said, it's logic versus emotion. Because people, so many people are like, well, it's tradition. We have to be together. It's family. My family said the same stuff. We all live in the same dang city. In six months, a year, we can easily just get together. If someone's not with us at that point, that's sad, but that's also life. That could have happened anyway. You know, that's why I said I can't accept the other part of it when you're rolling the dice on a higher risk just to have dinner together. It just doesn't make sense. And I understand from your perspective. I do see it from your perspective, and I do understand where you're coming from. I just respectfully disagree. If it only if it only put the people at risk who were going, I wouldn't care. But it doesn't. It puts other people at risk because you never know how many people you come into contact with through the day and everything else you do. That's where I, why I have such an issue with it. That's why I said, I, it, you know, if people listened, it'd be a different story. But that isn't the case. The one thing that at least it's worth lo- looking at is like, okay, does your does your community have? Uh, restrictions at the time. Yeah, you know what and are those do. restrictions? Like our yeah. area right now, we've we've gone to uh, no more than ten people. Yeah, that's why I asked. You know, I said, all right, yep. ten people. That's you know. Yeah, I can live with ten people. Level. Yeah, you can you can mitigate the the potential problems. There 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 is the ability to mitigate things. Yeah. when you're within that sort of scope, but it still is. Uh, there's a. a I think the emotional side of it is definitely worth thinking about because like for myself, California right now, some parts of their state are going to phase two mm. where I'm traveling to next week is still at phase three. Yeah. We have, we, our entire state of Idaho has gone to phase two. So there's no, there's no mandatory travel restrictions Everything though is recommended travel restrictions. Yeah. And I'm still gonna go. And I have, you know, I, I but I set, you know, and I set some standards for myself. And if any of those, if if any of them change, if if where I'm going in California goes to, to phase one, or if Idaho goes to phase one, even though up here we're at a completely different level than the rest of the state, yeah, then I am just making the decision we do not go. Mm. Um, and that's that's where I try to pull the emotion out is by setting at least some sort of a standard. Yeah. And the other one is this is like this is happening at work. We walk into units and people aren't wearing masks. Yeah. And we literally say we will not enter unless you wear a mask. And people look at us like like what's the big deal? That's mm-hmm. emotion. Yep. My and my my request and that's I think the thing to 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 do with these things is set a standard, stick to your standard. Yeah. You yeah, know, that, that's, yeah. That's, if if you have people in your home and they aren't listening, then you make them listen or you tell them to leave. You know, and I know that's the going to be where the problem is going to be is most people won't do that because they don't want to cause a scene during a family get together. Yeah. You know? Well, my coworkers don't want to cause a scene when we go into a unit, and I'm like, right. no, we cause a scene. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, this is the, we are doing this yep. because, and and this is the reason we're doing this so that the next day. You don't get the phone call that says everyone needs to go get a test. Yep. And and it's it's to me it's just as simple as that. It's a yeah. simple thing that you don't get the phone call tomorrow saying, "Hey, it's probably a good idea you go get a test." And then because the minute you think that, now you got to think about everyone that you've been around and yeah. that kind of thing. Yeah. And when we broke it down to that at my work, it made it really easy. Yeah. And that's why I said that's where my real issue with a lot of these gatherings is going to be, is look at any place you go. Take any random 10 people, you will never have or rarely have a 100% listening rate. 
But also take into consideration all the people you come in when you go to the grocery store, when you go to the pharmacy, when you do your yeah, normal. But, but you're not going to go hug the people at the grocery store. This is true. And you're going to hug family, even though you, I'm not. Yeah. And there's going to be a lot of my family. mother for at least two days. Yeah. Yeah. And there's going to be I'm a wearing, lot of family. And, and I'm that are wearing be a casual. mask in mm-hmm. the house yeah. for at least two days. And up to, and like, and like, uh, t- tonight or, t- you know, the next, I'll be there, uh, Saturday night. So like the, this last week, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to any band stuff. I'm not doing, you know, yeah, yeah. I, I have to go to the grocery store. I have to do things like that, but I'm limiting my exposure as much as possible. And when I get there, we, you know, we need to do a couple of things, but even then it's like, there's, there's like the hardest thing for family to do is that you are, is to uh, treat your family like an outsider. Yes. And they are an outsider. Yeah. Because they go into the world on their own. It's, they're not part of the bubble. Yeah. (laughs) And that's the hard part. And that's why my sister and my nephews need to treat Sharon and I as no different than a stranger. Yeah. Yeah. They have to. Yeah. And that's, that's, that's really what I, what I'm getting at with all of this is that, That is where a lot of the problem is, is that just the same as, you know, people, when they go into families' houses, they don't behave the same way they behave generally. You know, like I said, I've seen two things on TV where they've shown families gathering for something, and the mask rate in both situations is probably about 60%. You know, and it's while you're eating, drinking, it's one thing, but if a lot of family gatherings, people get up and walk around with a drink in their hand, they're not going to put their mask back on. You know, mm-hmm. or, uh, you know, everybody here is safe. We, we, you know, I trust everyone here. And there's been so many people doing that. And then weeks later, it's the, you know, you know, 20, 20 or 30 person gathering has like 16 positive tests. You know, it's, it's why I said it's it, if people everyone behaved the way Heno just described, it wouldn't be a problem or it would be way less of a problem. But but we all know not everyone's going to behave that way because we've already seen it. You know, like I said, anywhere you go, people don't listen, you know. And it is, it's uh, everything in life is balance. I mean, it all keeps coming back to balance. It's finding the right balance uh, between cautiousness, preparedness, as well as living. You know, you, you have to, you have to balance all of those things out and you have to wait. Well, I'll disagree with you. No, you don't. There's certain places where there are no exceptions to this. Yeah. You're, My you're, workplace, there's no exceptions yeah. to this. There is no, there's no balance. Yeah. Um, I, that doesn't apply. Mm-hmm. It's. I, I'll give you the thing. I'll, this is the one thing though, and this is what my doctor bandmate said, and I've said it here. Yeah. Is whatever you do, in two weeks, when it turns out that somebody tested positive, got really sick, or died, make sure you was worthwhile. Yeah. And I think that's fair. Yeah. I think that's a fair way of saying. Yeah. But there's no balance when it comes to health and safety. Yeah. The I I there's there's there is I disagree with you because if you if there was no balance between health and safety, then we wouldn't do anything. We They don't let balance. you don't get All right. Everyone that's dying in the hospital right now is talking to their loved ones on a cell phone. There's no balance there. Your loved ones don't get to come and visit you in the hospital. Yeah. There's no exception to that. Yep. These people are literally calling and saying their last words over a tablet or a phone. Yeah. Or they don't even get to walk into the hospital. There's no balance there. I understand all that, but I also understand that the number of people who are actually dying from this, the number of people in the hospital, it is a in direct relation to the number of people who have had it and have survived it, dramatically different. But it doesn't you know? just... Af- not, we are not talking at 100% death sentence here. No, it's not. But there are so many complications. Well, here, So many complications. Here, here's something... That do, and, 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 and no, I have, a great, I have a great counter for that in that this. Almost every place in the country now is reporting near capacity for beds. If the numbers continue to go up, the death rate will go up because people can't get treatment. That's why these numbers have to come down. That's why people have to listen. If they don't, 
Not to mention, we're already seeing healthcare workers that are exhausted and they're getting sick. If our front line gets sick, we're screwed because no one else. I can't step in and treat people. You know, well, they like, can't even they can't even send. Uh, no, they it, can't send. They can't airlift people to other hospitals because the other hospitals are already full. Exactly. That's blah, why blah, I said this, all that. I, normally, yeah. I would agree with you. Like when it comes to stuff like seatbelt, wearing a helmet on a motorcycle, I'd stand on your side on that argument. I don't care because it only affects you. But in this case, it doesn't. It affects community. And when something affects community, we all have to pitch in because we have to sacrifice. And it doesn't matter if it makes us uncomfortable. This is what has to happen so that it doesn't get horrible. It's already well, terrible. It comes down to my, my whole point on balance. Because, yes, I'm a mask wearer, and I firmly believe in wearing masks all the time whenever you're around people that you do not live with. 100% agree with that. Social distancing, 100% agree with that. Taking precautions to protect yourself and protect your families, absolutely, 100% behind all of that. But here's where the balance comes in, because I'm not going to not see my mother, you know, because emotion. of... This is emotion. This is exactly what I was saying. You're not you're not talking logically. You're talking from emotion. I'm sorry. I know no no. I'm saying that's fine. It's one of those situations where like I said, this is a perfect example of some people are acting with their heads, other people are acting with their their emotions. It isn't a judgment on one side or the other even though it may seem like it. It's that it's the dead honest truth. Everybody who says tradition, I'm not going to not be with my family, blah, blah, blah. That is all emotion. There is zero fact in any of that. There's nothing scientific about it. There's nothing that, that points toward anything other than it's just what people want. And that's fine. But they also have got to understand that you are putting people at risk. Even if it's Can a I low risk, even if it's whatever it is. There's a reason you don't get behind the wheel when you're drunk. You may love to drink. Maybe fun. You want to go sleep in your own bed that night. That's not a good idea to get behind a wheel. Even though the chance of you killing someone is minimal, you still shouldn't do it. There are certain mitigating risks that I believe in life you must take. Jen, you, you, you bringing your mother being in town and you're incorporating her into your bubble is one of is a completely reasonable and understandable yeah. uh place where you 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 take what you would ordinarily do with anybody else and you put it aside yeah that's the totally reasonable mm -hmm. absolutely I, I i you know i don't want you to feel like yeah like there's no, yeah. there's certain things that are you know like i said i'm i'm i i will be i'm going to be in the same household as yeah. my mother i'm yeah. gonna, i'm going to but i am i'm going to we are going to be limiting and I think the thing is, is, is ask that the people around you respect the situation. Yeah. And, and that is something that, that, that can be done is to ask people to follow a certain standard and be consistent with it. Yeah. And there's nothing, there's nothing, there's nothing wrong with that. And anybody should be able to accomplish that. Yeah. I, I, I need to do this. You know, I even though even though I, I can sit, you know, because I can come up with all sorts of excuses. But the bottom line is this. Yeah. I'm a stranger. Yeah. And look, Jen, I, I don't the minute I, I walk I, in that house. I know it may seem like I'm attacking you. I'm not trying to because literally I could have pointed the same arguments at Heno. Oh, I know. Because of what he's doing. Realistically, the same thing. Everything he's doing, like, he, and, you know, he, he's choosing to do these things. These aren't things that he. Sign, you know, like I said, there's nothing about this that he absolutely has to do. It's something he wants to do. He feels he has to do it. That's fine. But it's like I said, and I'm again, I'm not attacking you. I'm attacking the people who are just being very casual about all of this. Like, well, you're not stopping me from having a family gathering. And there's people I've read online. Like, I mean, people I know who are going to have like 30 people over. Mm. And then, it, you know, you see sh or stuff on TV. Like, the, there's police officers like, well, I'm not going to anybody's house and breaking up their family, even if they have 30 people. And it's like, what are we doing here? Like, no one seems to grasp the, the heaviness of this. I understand we're all tired of COVID. 
Every one of us is. No one wants to, you know, we all resent it. We hate it. We just want normality. I get it. I do too. But it's, you know, they're, they're like you, 10 people, you can, and you're right, given the space that you're doing, the stuff you're doing, you can mitigate most of the situation there, you know, and there's still risks, but whatever, you've lowered them as far as you can lower them, mm-hmm. essentially, you know, but I know there are going to be people out there. There's, I mean, again, all you have to do is look at Instagram on any given day and you see people with 30 of them out in public no masks. They're all hugging each other, taking pictures. And this is going to continue. And then the next two weeks after that on the news, we're going to hear about how numbers are ridiculously high. Mm. And then everybody is going to get mad because the governors are putting curfews and mask restrictions and all this into place. And it's like, well, yeah, you won't listen. There's a reason your parents clamp down on, you know, clamp down on us on our freedoms as ch- as children because if we don't listen they have to do something to rein us in and get us to listen and that's where we're at that's why i said if people listen and do like you are talking minimizing things i don't have a problem with it but i there's going to be way more people who are going to be that are going to blow past that number of 10 there's going to be a lot of people out there with 20 people. My family was still trying to push to have our full thing, which would have been near 30 people. Until various ones of us were like, are you crazy? That's insane. That's too many people. Yeah. It All the houses we have in our family are, are too small for that many people. You know, so unless someone's having it in a backyard or something, there's mm-hmm. no way we'd be walking by each other constantly having to sit basically on each other's laps. So... That's why I said I just implore people out there, if these are the things you're striving for, it's like this just isn't the year. You know, like we can just we just have to sacrifice it. And again, if you think it's too much, call up one of the people who's lost a loved one and ask them about sacrifice. And that's all I have to say. Well, we kind of went on a tangent, didn't we? (laughs) Yeah. Well, folks, I think you've actually heard the first crazy life disagreement. No, we've disagreed before. I don't know. Not, not, to not this no, not to no, because again, like I said, we're we're arguing two things that can't resolve each other. Here's here's the thing: is we we need to apply it to what we do here, and if if there is. The second that I start trying to make the balance uh, reasonable arguments is the minute I'm going into the cognitive distortions list. I mean, it, I I know I am the minute I start doing that because this is a this is a door that once the foot gets into. The door flings fully open. Yeah, that's why I said it's 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 the reason why people can't seem to resolve this in mass is isn't because we're so divided as a nation. Blah blah. blah. It's literally because those two things don't resolve each other well. Yeah, and I think you I know. think tying it in with our our potential uh, topic for tonight is if we use gratitude for what we have and still maintain the standards that we are perfectly okay with in our workplaces and in our public places within our families, we're looking out for each other and we're showing respect and yeah. we're showing that we care for each other. Yeah. And there's gratitude. There should be gratitude in that the ability to even be around each other and, and, and not be completely limited. And that's like, that's, that's the outlook I'm taking on this. Yeah. I, you know, so my family is uh, uh, eight of us total. And um, I, you know, I don't know if, if Judy's going to be there, but, you know, my mother is going to be involved. Luckily, my, my sister and my brother-in-law have a huge, great room and we can be spread apart and we will be. Mm. There's the, the and I can be grateful for the opportunity to be around my family and be completely OK with the fact that it's going to be very different because there's a reason for that. Yeah. And and I think that's that's something that it, it, there's too much. I can confirmation bias the heck out of this thing yes. if I want to. Realistically, either way, you could confirmation bias yourself out of this. 
Absolutely. Yeah, you know, that's yeah, what I was saying. Think... That's that's why I said that's why this is so hard to resolve because it is a very, it, you know, it's hard to argue with someone who wants to be with their family, you know. But it's also should be hard to argue with somebody coming from the other side too, you know. Like both sides on this can easily confirm their bias, and it makes this whole situation harder to resolve, and it makes it personal, and it makes you know it's very difficult. So well, you know. We, we've we all landed at pretty much what the guidelines are, you know, it's, yeah. it's, it's the balance between you can't not live, you have to yeah. live some sort of life, you can't just hold up in a bubble. But that being said, you also have to take your precautions to make yourself as safe as possible. And, you know, and make those around you as safe as possible. So that's where I'm going at with the, with the balance, you have to find that the teeter totter balance there between the two being yeah, ex- but but people can talk themselves into what's essential. The the, the yeah, yeah. And that's the problem. That's yeah. the problem is it's people not, will absolutely not, talk. Lines. Yeah, the the people can easily talk themselves into well, this is essential. Yeah, this is essential to well whatever you know. Well, that's the thing. Where... I, I I had somebody argue with me about this yesterday because of the state that they're they're in has a ten person limit. And they were mm-hmm. like, well, our gathering's going to be 20. And I'm like, well, the state says you can't have more than that. And they're like, well, who who am I going to tell no to? And it's like, I don't know this. It, it, you know, I don't know, but you need to figure that out. Because, again, like yeah. you were saying, if you're going by guidelines, the state is straight out saying no more than 10 people is safe. Mm-hmm. And you're just going to blow right past it to 20. You know, it's like that kind of defiance is where the problem lies with some mm-hmm. of this. And I get it. It's similar to like a wedding, right? Like people have 300 person weddings and I'm not talking about during COVID. I just mean in general, they'll have 300 people because neither side wants to tell somebody no, or they don't want to tell their mom they can't invite so-and-so or, or or their aunt or whoever. And they got to invite their 19th cousin that they haven't seen in 20 years. But because if they don't, so-and-so is going to be upset, you know, and it's similar in that fashion, right? Like, if you're having Thanksgiving dinner, how do you tell your siblings that it's okay to come, but their kids are not welcome, mm-hmm. right? Or their kids are not well. You know, I get it. It's it's hard to, especially as years go on, you know, the air quote essential family members or, or whatever, it's, it's tough to draw that line because if I tell my sister her kid or their kids aren't welcome, then odds are she's going to go, well, I'm not going to come then. And then, you know, like, so it's, although, you know, that can help your numbers, but you know what I'm saying? It's like, it's hard to do that. I understand, you know, I, I can totally see, or if you have somebody like your situation, Jen, you know, like you've got both of you come from split families. So you literally could have, you know, like, I know your dad and stuff, but, but, you know, like if say you invited your mom and your dad, you know, and, and whatever, right. and, you know, and then Dan does the same thing with his mom is that, his, you know, it's like, okay, we're at 10 people without trying here. Now we've got siblings. We can't invite. I get it. Like I said, I, I understand all this stuff. It, it's a horrible situation, no matter what, how you slice it. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I don't know what the answer is. It sucks. But, you know, like you said, the best we can yep. do is use guidelines. Yep. You know, so I, I think that's, that is the best answer that we can come up with right now is between you know, be, sorry real quick between that and what Heno said about having your own yeah things your own and sticking own. to it not just for yourself but also out of respect to the people you're around you know do what you can to keep everyone else safe as well mm-hmm. yeah the the resistance the resistance to being to being dictated to just brings me right back to not wanting to accept my isms. <laughs> yeah. It is so familiar to me. Yeah. It is absolutely, nobody has a right to tell me that I can't drink. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Except nobody, for you. you know, like, like the, it's the same arguments. Mm-hmm. It's the same stuff. Yeah. And that's why, you know, I, I, I appreciate that I've had, that veil of denial removed from me and I can apply it to other situations. Yeah. It's not going to be easy though. Right. It's not. I got to say all. too, like completely kind of moving past this a little bit here is that, you know, Lord bless everybody who is getting together because there's so many hot buttons to dance around this year. 
more, more worse worse than ever <laughs> yeah because yeah. you're you're like you're like all right let's uh let's see we usually have some uh political drama at our dinner yeah. now let's introduce masks right <laughs> and the political drama is not over it necessarily in the country and you know like uh, yeah. there's gonna be a lot of tap dancing around that stuff so you know we we've done an issue or an episode i believe we did one in the past on this didn't we jen i think you yeah. and i did it where it was basically how to steer the conversation like back to anything but hot button issues. So, um, you know, maybe go check that episode out or look that up online for some tips because Lord knows it's going to be tough for some families. You know, there's even with only, you know, eight people, 10 people, there's still going to be those relatives that, you know, no matter where you stand, there's going to be somebody probably who doesn't stand where you do. And yeah. Well, like my my mother was like, I, I had suggested that we would get Indian takeout for for Thanksgiving, yeah, just to do something completely different, yeah. And 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 my mother, being my mother, just was like, no, we can, we'll we'll uh, two days before we'll we'll go down to the place and I'll take you guys out for lunch. And I'm like, no, I'll drive down there get the takeout and we'll have it <laughs> back at our house. You know, it's like yeah. this, these little, you know, that that those are the places where I'm going to steer, yeah. <laughs> things back to that you know that's a great example because that's one of those where again excuse me you know minim minimizing the risks like you know mm -hmm. i i saw a few weeks ago they talked about how a lot of the people who were uh testing positive in covid had you know recently eaten at a restaurant and it isn't that the restaurant necessarily is a problem but you know anytime you introduce tons of people like grocery stores originally i don't know if you guys remember they were telling people to avoid grocery stores because so many people are coming and going. There's so many moving parts that you can't, you know, it's really hard to keep yourself safe in that situation. And uh, restaurants were that way. Now in the area me and Jen live in, I believe both states are shutting restaurants down inside. I know Michigan definitely is. I think I read that Ohio was going to. Ohio's uh, putting up a curfew. What, Jen? Sorry. Potentially Thursday, Tuesday, uh, he announced that he put um, he put a curfew yeah. at 10 p.m. Mm -hmm. for the last call for drinks and serving. Yeah. Uh, and um, all retail closes at 10, uh, except for pharmacies and grocery stores. Yeah. I can, can, can resume their normal hours. Right. And then um, if the numbers keep going up, which they have been. Uh, on Thursday, he's supposed to announce if he's going to be shutting down the bars uh, and okay. the restaurants. Because I know Mi Michigan is shutting down bars and restaurants on the inside, for, I think, starting uh, Thursday or next week. I can't remember which it is. Starting um, this week for three weeks. Yeah. I, I couldn't remember. I didn't look at the date. I just saw it was coming. And, you know, mm -hmm. it's not a surprise. But, yeah, you know, some areas are, are doing this. Some areas haven't yet. Like for us, like what you were saying, Heno, for us, it's like, well, it's not really an option anyway. <laughs> we can go get carry out, but we can't can't really go in. Not that we were anyway. Like we have completely stayed away from eating inside of places. You know, I think I've eaten inside of two places since COVID start, you know, showed up. So, you know, yeah, they put they put dividers in my and yeah, shorties and I still I'm like, nah. I walk in there, I see how many people are in there, and I do my takeout, and I go home. Yeah, it's just it's just not worth it. Yeah, it's it's that's it's one of those. Not. Like, I think that's a great example of one of those where, like, like uh, your your doctor friend mentioned to you, right? Like two weeks from now, if you you know you yeah. saw a thing from Shorties and they're like, hey, blah blah blah, you know, you'd be like, was it worth it to just sit in there and eat my breakfast? Like, eh, no. probably not one of those hills you want to, you know. Yeah. Please forgive the pun. You don't you don't want to die on that hill. You know, that's not. That's not where you want to be. So, yeah, it's but yeah, anyway, uh, yeah, please, please be as safe as possible for your no matter what you're doing for Thanksgiving, even if you're going to get carry out, you know, if the place has curbside pickup, maybe opt for that. So you don't have to go inside and wait with other people if the place is allowing that, which I don't think they can do that here. I don't remember. The rules are weird on that kind of stuff. You know, like you're not allowed to go in and, and eat, but you can go in and order your food and stand around until it's ready. It's kind of a weird, you know, like why can four of us stand in here in close proximity, but we can't go sit down in distance and eat? It's kind of weird. But a lot of the places up by me, what they're doing is uh, if you order it to go, 
and then when you get to the restaurant, you call them yeah. and they bring it up to your car. That's how uh, Mancino is a pizza place right up here. That's what they do, and mm-hmm. uh, that that is probably the best option there because that that also keeps them. You know, they don't have a million and one people walking through the place and stuff. So yeah, exactly. I actually think that's what we're doing this year. Is I think we're just gonna place a like to go order somewhere and get food. I don't think we're gonna that's, bother. We're, we're gonna. We're going to do it from one of the grocery stores. Yeah. And then as far as, you know, that's the, the big question for me is, is going to be, you know, I have to, I, I haven't had a chance to talk to my sister uh, this week, but to kind of get the, you know, let's set the ground rules. I want to, I want to, I want, I want to have ground rules and I want everyone to and stick up to them. I mean, yeah. my nephews are going to be perfectly happy. They don't have to hug me. <laughs> 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 yes, like to isolate upstairs anyway, so that's yeah. good. <laughs> I would have loved that as a kid, especially. I would have loved that because I always hated how you know the ants and all go. Oh, go give everybody a hug. It's like uh. <laughs> now I'd be yeah, like, ah, oh, COVID. I don't know. It's, it's a terrible Every, idea. Yeah. Th- think about how much uh, HPV one, or I'm sorry, the uh, um, uh, herpes simplex one is not going to be passed from your aunts and uncles to your nephews <laughs> with kisses. Yeah, <laughs> this is a good thing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> find the silver linings, right? There's a silver silver lining That's in there. Terrible, but really, it's like like for me that the uh, uh, get getting home and and uh, yeah, I I haven't I haven't considered what happens when I walk in the door at my mom's yeah. house. I, I yeah. mean, and that ground rule has to be laid out. I and and that's know. really smart. No matter what your situation is going to be, the ground rules are are need to be there, and everyone needs to know what they are because. Listen, like I said, there's going to be a lot of families out there that are going to say, hey, everyone's got to wear masks, blah, 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 when you're coming in. And you know there's going to be families that's going to have that one person. I ain't wearing a mask. And then what do you do? Do you tell them they're not allowed in your house? Do you, you know, like you need to be prepared for that scenario because there's a chance of it. You know, it's just how the world is at the moment. And, you know, you need to be prepared for that as well as anything else. And. You know, kind of like what Henna was saying with having his own ground rules, especially if it's in your own house. I mean, you know, don't don't be afraid of of standing for yourself or saying, hey, I have these things in place to protect everybody. Well, and, and you know, what I get a lot at my work is, are you serious? And I say, yes, yeah, I'm very serious. Yep. And and I and I and I don't explain yeah. it and i don't make excuses yeah because i could see our... like even at jen's scenario right like she's talking about the like you know her serving the food i could say oh well i'll help you you know and somebody trying to get back to oh yeah you know and you're yep. like no we're <laughs> yeah we're not doing yeah. that oh yeah. our biggest issue is our ups guy because he's not from our area and he's you know he's a unique individual and we just i i you know we've had to say you, you're not walking in the door yeah you're putting the mask on. You're not walking in the door. Yeah. And like, are you serious? Yes, very serious. Yeah, it's yeah. and that's our that's our standard, right? And it is tough, but you know, again, you you know, all of us have to consider we're we're the our own first line of defense, you know. And then past that, again, if you you know, like, hey, I don't want like you said, it's like you know, I don't want a phone call two weeks later that somebody, you know, got sick or that we're a spreader event now you know <laughs> like, that's why we canceled know. our last gig yeah i was just like that is not the publicity <laughs> that i want for our band what are you talking about there's no such thing as bad publicity i don't remember yeah, <laughs> yeah. even though it was small it was still like yeah. you know what it's just not worth it right it's just not worth it yeah so, you know things are things hey we're look at those look at you know let's let's talk about some 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 scary percentages and some some not and some great percentages you know uh 150,000 people cases 1500 deaths that's 1% yeah expand that out to thir- 330 million people yeah. that's 3.3 million people dead yeah. for a 1% uh case fat- fatality rate yeah. all right Six months from now, 95% chance of a successful vaccine. Yeah. For everybody. Right. Keep an eye on that prize. Yep. 
it makes the sacrifices right now a little bit more worthwhile. Yeah, I saw Dr. Now, Fauci were... and some others talking about that on the news the other night, kind of like, hey, just keep this in mind. We just it's going to stink for a while. But, you know, kind of like we, you know, we might see some a little bit of daylight here, you know, not not a full on solution, but a little daylight to where maybe we can ease some of this stuff up and actually live some life again. And then I saw the that like Ticketmaster will be having some sort of a special vaccine or 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 some sort of a antibody test uh, requirement for getting tickets for concerts. And all I can think about is is all the people that I know that are so anti-vax and so anti everything. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm gonna go rock and roll. <laughs> <laughs> like, like I just I went through that shingles vaccine. Yeah, that was horrible yeah <laughs> this is nothing yeah well then they, they had a, a woman on uh, cbs oh. evening news i think it was a couple nights ago that she was one of the human volunteers for moderna's vaccine oh, yeah. and she was like it really wasn't a big deal she's like it was yeah. very similar to getting a flu shot you know she's like i felt a little off for a couple of days and i had a sore arm you know <laughs> and i was like yeah that <laughs> i'm okay with that you know so yeah bring on them microchips <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah welcome bill gates into yeah. my body yeah <laughs> please come in and change my dna yeah please at least at least if you're going to get in there get some nanobots and fix some stuff i mean exactly fix know. this i got i got a little arthritis in my knee oh yeah. boy chat i get home on uh wouldn't that be something if down the road that was it? Like we find out they actually did microchip it. There's nanobots in there, but like, you know. But everyone starts feeling better, and now we've got to have the debate over whether it was worth it or not. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh. So I, I I come home and and Jax comes hopping up to me on three legs. I'm like, oh no, that's no good. I know, and I, it just it just crushes me right away. Just the weird thing is how happy like it didn't even like his whole. There was his attitude was exactly the same. Oh, there wow. was no like he was a happy little dude. Hmm. And that's the thing that's a little disturbing about it, because like his back's been bothering him for like the last month. And that I can tell he's not comfortable. Yeah. Like he is very cautious. He wasn't cautious at all. Oh, just hop along, Jaxie. I'm just not on this leg. I'm like, oh, that's a three thousand dollar knee, dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And 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 then I I the next by the next mm -hmm. morning. I was like, okay, I got to take him in for x-rays. And I'm like, wait a minute. This happened a couple of years ago when he got the first snowfall. He got really excited and he started running a oh, lot. Oh, that's right. I remember that now. Yeah. Remember that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I forgot about that. And I'm like, he'll be fine. And sure enough, he's, I mean, I can tell he's, he, when he jumps on something, he's, you know, not putting any weight on the other leg and he's not, you know, when he sits down, you can tell it's still bothering him a little bit, but I was just like, I'm like, okay, he's, he's okay. It's just a strain. He didn't, he didn't screw anything up too bad. Yeah. Cause he had his nine, nine year birthday on Sunday. Right. Yeah. I no. saw, I saw that plate of bacon you made for yeah. him. So yeah, <laughs> I bet he hated that. <laughs> 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 so what are you what are you gonna make what are you serving, Jen? Oh, we're just having the traditional um Marvin's uh, smoked turkey, um <laughs> uh, green bean casserole, um mashed potatoes, sweet potatoes, probably another vegetable of some sort, pumpkin pie, apple pie. We're keeping it real traditional. That's why I wanted to go Indian. I'm well, so disappointed in my mother. <laughs> it, it, it's it's interesting, though. Like, I'm glad you went in and explained because, you know, having talked with people on Twitter over the years, you find out how different traditional is based on, I mean, not just obviously like ethnicities or whatever, sure. but based on just where you are in the country. Because like up here, you don't see a lot of like macaroni and cheese on Thanksgiving, but there are a lot of people where that's a traditional side dish. And I'm like, dang it, I grew up in the wrong family. So, you know, I do have a macaroni and cheese on the back burner that I could stick in the oven, but <laughs> I'm like, Oh, we're deep having fry, stuff. deep fry, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. deep fried mac and Wait, cheese is did, something else. I bet. Awesome. Did you, did you say you're having stuffing or are you having dressing? We are actually having dressing. Okay. Because oh, stuff the turkey with mac and cheese. <laughs> no, <laughs> Hanno. It is not a good cooking situation. <sighs> Watch the Good Eats. Like Elton Brown discusses why it's a terrible idea. <laughs> he this has is not a terrible idea. Oh, has he? In, 
Yeah, in the oh, new okay. version of Good Eat. Yeah. Uh, he goes back and reviews his original Good Eat. Oh, wow. Okay, cool. He's retracted the statement. Wow, all right. I see. Oh, wow. Because for years right. he was very anti-stuffing. Uh, stuffing. Yeah. Because it's, you know, the... Um, because not like part of it, you know, most people who don't want to do it are like, eh, it's a weird, you know, it's weird because of bacteria or whatever. And it's like, but I think if I remember correctly, his issue was more that it's just not a good, um, like cooking vessel more than, you know, right. as well as it doesn't always give you the, you know, uh, you know, the optimal cook, uh, uh, food experience there that you could have so he he's more of, was more of an advocate for stuffing or uh dressing i mean and and i think he still does prefer dressing to stuffing but he has retracted some of his statements that he made yeah. in the I it's knew... actually really interesting if you ever get a chance folks in your list um and you come across the i think it's good eats reloaded or something, yeah, something along like those that. lines mm-hmm. It'd yeah. be funnier if you like mystery science theater and his own episodes. <laughs> exactly. It's it's pretty entertaining to have to see him go through going, okay, that was yeah. just false. Yeah. I don't know what I was thinking when I said <laughs> well, Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's like, I know he had redone some stuff online and, and whatever. Mm-hmm. Like, he's revised some of his recipes because he's gone back and gone, wow, these are really just gut bombs, basically. You know, <laughs> well, he lost, he lost a, you know, a good amount of weight. And afterwards, he was kind of like, you know, hit hit the, hey, you know what? I'm putting recipes out there. I should be more responsible for what I'm doing. You know, yeah. not mm. just, oh, here, use 10 pounds of butter in <laughs> in whatever you're making or whatever. Even though it'll taste delicious, it's also a terrible idea for your health. So he he's backtracked on a lot of that stuff, too. So it was it is interesting because he he approaches food very much in a scientific approach, which is, a you know, if the evidence has changed opinion or not opinion um uh, you know the, the uh common thought on something can change you know so he's i always like that about him is that if something was deemed unhealthy but it's since been proven you know like think about when we were kids you know eggs were either amazing or they were the devil's food because hmm. of the right. cholesterol you know now everyone yeah. looks at the protein and such in eggs more than they look at the cholesterol of eggs. Plus, we know more about the correlation between cholesterol in food to cholesterol in bodies than we did and blah, 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 you know. So the, the you know, way we look at that food is a lot different than it used to be. Or, you know, my grandparents grew up probably eating, you know, a pound of bacon in, in the morning, and now it's like, eh, maybe he's off the bacon a little bit, <laughs> you know, like... <laughs> more bacon but then again my grandma is 103 years old so i mean <laughs> and all mm-hmm. she used to cook with was a lard you know everything was cooked in lard basically and here she is still at 103 you know <laughs> so what do we know you know right <laughs> well guys i mean i think we're almost at... <laughs> yeah, I think we yeah. just rushed an hour on that one yeah we actually Ooh, did the we're great at, covid debate we're at like 50, 58 <laughs> minutes i mean we could still do the topic if you want to do it because they're bullet pointed. It, it, it is, but um, no, I mean, I, th- I think we're good. I think we we kind of covered a lot and stuff and, on this episode. And I think we've given people a lot of food for thought already. I see what you did there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but did they stuff that food for thought or dress it? <laughs> the great debate. <laughs> hey. There must be balance in the turkey. It must be balance. This, this, Everything in life must have balance. This isn't the force, Heno. Everything's <laughs> the force. Come on. If there's anything about Thanksgiving is a meal, anyways, nothing is balanced. Oh, that's that true. No, there we go. Yeah. <laughs> You Seriously. know what? That should have been my argument. <laughs> should have been. There's yeah. no balance in Thanksgiving. Yeah. In Thanksgiving, it is all carb loaded. It is. Exactly. Well, that's what I remember saying that a few years ago at my family thing. Like we were, me and my nephew were kind of advocating redoing like what we had, you know, as yeah. in healthier ways. Because it's like, look, we can't even have corn without having cornbread around it. You know, <laughs> like, we, we, you, oh, you want green beans? Well, here's a bunch of cream of mushroom soup and onions and, you know, or not yeah, onions, fried, fried onions. Yeah. Exactly. You know, yeah, exactly. Like, <laughs> you can't just even have just regular green beans, you know. No, no, we got to we gotta add a carb to it. 
got to gussy it all up. Yeah. Sweet potatoes can't just be regular sweet potatoes. No. They've got to have marshmallows and sh- brown sugar and yeah, yeah. butter. Sweet yeah. potato. Sweet is in the name. Do we really need more sugar? I don't. I'll say this, and you know, you've openly watched me. Sweet potatoes is my main course at Thanksgiving. Like, yes, there's yes. more of that than anything on my plate. And I usually, because, you know, you got a carb load, I usually will just put them right onto a buttered roll and eat them like sandwiches. <laughs> so, <laughs> Hey, I'm just grateful for the fact that Brussels sprouts aren't just Brussels sprouts. They've been sautéed in a ton of butter and uh, bacon. Uh, the only way to eat Brussels sprouts. The only way. Sautéed with lots of butter, lots of bacon. Absolutely. <sighs> Oh, if I even, bless my brother-in-law. <laughs> if I even smell them, I start get I start feeling sick. Oh. I can't stand the smell of of any sort of like cooked cabbage turns my stomach so bad. I, I had a, I had a, I had an ex that would that would boil Brussels sprouts. I'd walk in the house and be oh. like, oh. <laughs> but I like cabbage. I can do the cabbage thing. I, yeah, I can't do cabbage. I can't do either of them. Both if of I you? Smell, yeah, if yep. I smell it cooking, it seriously wow. any sort of cabbage like that. Brussels sprouts or cabbage, if I smell it, it's why it's funny because I've had people like, well, you eat Chinese food and they put cabbage or bok choy or whatever in, yeah. you know, and I'm like, yeah, but it's already cooked and they just mm-hmm. hand it to True. me. It's yeah, different. Yeah, yeah. But even then, I don't love it. And, and there's usually not a lot of it. If they put a lot of it in there, I probably wouldn't get it. I would get something that didn't have it. Plus, a lot of times it's big enough pieces. If I don't want it, I can always pick it out of there. But... um. Yeah, I I know I've seen people where that's become for a lot of people that's become a a, a traditional Thanksgiving side dish now, um, you know, and it didn't used to be because I you know we all, all like grew up in the era of where Brussels sprouts were basically just gross like they were just <laughs> never prepared right you know, and yeah. I've had them different ways and everybody all, as soon as I tell them I don't like Brussels sprouts usually the first thing I hear is you just haven't had them right and I'm like well obviously because I still hate them. And I've had them probably six or seven different ways. So, I, and I keep trying them. And again, Jen can verify because her and I went to a place and she got them as an appetizer or a, something the one time. And I was like, well, I'll try it. <laughs> and no more put it in my mouth and was like, nope. <laughs> Soy dressing. So good. See, and and it sounds on paper, mm. sounds pretty good, but nope. I, that's why I'm, I'm about carrots. I can't. Yeah. I, raw carrots I'm fine with, but cooked carrots, keep them away from me. If I smell them, forget it. Hate cooked carrots. So when I, I made, get it. When I made stuff for, for me and Jen, the only way that I know of that she ate cooked carrots was when I would make um, when I would make my own um, like spaghetti sauce. Because I mm. would I would throw a bunch of vegetables into the blender and with the mm-hmm. sauce and kind of you know, so they get like chunky or whatever. But I put carrots in there because I saw on TV one of the chefs yeah. said that it helps cut down the acidity of the sauce. Yeah, I've seen that before. And and you don't really taste them like they they don't beat you over the head. So that was about yeah. the only way I know of that she ate cooked carrots. <laughs> I'll pick them out of just about anything. Yeah. If I can see them, uh, I won't eat them. <laughs> That's why the sauce worked because you couldn't see them. Also, you, you really. Can't see them. Probably couldn't really taste them either because there was a lot of other flavors going on in that. But, and I didn't use a lot. It's not like I. It was like half carrots. You know, it was like one carrot in a whole thing of sauce. But still, it was. Oof. Yeah. Exactly. So I kind of wonder. So what would your what, what's your normal Thanksgiving Heno like dinner? Is it pretty much what Jen said, or do you, is there something else that's? Yeah, pretty much. It's, okay. It's the the only di- the only difference is like. Growing up, it was super traditional, like real basic with my mom. She, mm-hmm. she used to, you know, it was simple turkey stuff. Like my brother-in-law is quite the the chef, and along with his his friend Michael, they do these the the crazy spread. And, and uh, last year, uh, Mark did it all by himself, which just was amazing. But mm-hmm. what's great is the there's uh, 
in-law family members that are Russian. So then they bring in their kind of thing. And yeah. then, you know, my mom will bring in something a little more traditional Estonian kind of stuff, like the sauerkraut and things like that. And then we have Estonian friends. They bring, they'll, they'll also do like the sauerkraut. And mm. those are just the little, the little differences, but for the most part, it's your traditional thing, you know, your setup. You just, some stuff's done a little bit more customs. <laughs> yeah. Know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's why it's always cool sometimes when you get to go to someone else's house for something, you know, and, and especially like, you know, if you know that they have something that you've not, ne- you know, that you don't normally yeah. get for yours or whatever, it's, it's like, Ooh, you know, like, um, you know, I remember one of my friends talking about their family dinner and, you know, they did macaroni and cheese and collard greens and all. And I'm like, Oh man, I was like, sign me up. I was like, I'd rather go to theirs. Um, you know, because it would have basically just been eating a bunch of soul food instead of eating. <laughs> like, I'm not yeah. a big, I don't really love turkey anyway. So, you know, like, you give me other options, I'd probably just go eat. Oh, that's know. like me. I, I, I'll i hit the ham. Me too. Yeah. I mean, there's turkey definitely on the plate, but I love the ham, especially when it's done right. Oh, yeah. somebody always just does it up. Yeah. So, so I said, my, my thing is, my plate is usually like about a third sweet potatoes, and then I fill it with whatever else fits on there. So... <laughs> <laughs> it's funny though because as i've gotten older i don't love the like marshmallows and all that kind of stuff on them i actually would be just fine if somebody just made like we mentioned you know marshmallows oh yeah sweet potatoes really oh, people put marshmallows oh, in sweet potatoes dude, totally yeah they it, like sugar, marshmallows yeah you make like, like a syrupy sauce and then the you bake the marshmallows on top yeah huh it's so sweet. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's, it's beyond it's, sweet. Well, it's why for a long time what I would do is I'd eat the rest of, of what was on my plate, and I would leave the sweet potatoes, and the sweet potatoes would just be my dessert, basically. Because they literally are. there's marshmallows. <laughs> I mean, you know, like it it is mm-hmm. basically set up like it's a dessert, so why not just consume it as such? That's, yeah. You know, but then there's there's pie. I mean, you can't just not have pie. You know? Exactly. So. I ordered my pies from the um, bakery today, and she yeah. asked me, what kind of pie do you want? And I'm like, well, pumpkin. And she's like, okay. So she wrote down pumpkin, and I said, well, I need another one. I was stumped. I'm like, there's so many <laughs> different options. I'm like, I, yeah. I don't know what, where, whichever direction to go. Yeah. Because, you know, obviously pumpkin, yeah, sure, that's mm-hmm. given. But then there's the pecan, or do you go with the apple? Or do I you... love pecan. It was something I never liked as a kid, and now I love it. I love pecan pie. And if you ever get a chance, Hanno, try a butter tart. A butter tart is kind of a Canadian thing. And like it, Canadian in Canada, uh, Tim Hortons usually has them. But butter tarts are kind of like pecan pies without pecans. Huh. And substitute the pecans for raisins. Oh, I bet that's interesting. It is really good. And they're just like miniature tarts. They're just these little... Yeah, yeah three bite things oh they're so freaking good i'm not a big fan of of raisins in desserts but that i'd try that for sure yeah yeah i'm not a huge fan of raisins myself in general but because well it doesn't have a really good texture right yeah yeah you know that's well there's yeah because there's nothing about raisins that screams like decadent you know, or or luxurious, silky. It's you know, a, all the weird, well. It's a weird textured, yeah. uh, uh, squishy thing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Nobody likes weird textured, squishy things. Yeah. That, that's like a lima beam, right? <laughs> you know? Do you like Ew. biting on your finger after you've soaked it in the tub for an hour? Boy, have <laughs> yes, we got exactly. the food for you. <laughs> exactly. Oh boy, <laughs> this is great. <laughs> All right. Well, now that we've kind of derailed, <laughs> decompressed, and lightened it up, yeah. lightened it up a bit, we've taken you on a roller coaster ride tonight, folks. So hope you didn't run away. Yeah, hopefully, you didn't run away and hung in it with us. Yeah. Hopefully, no one got turned off when mom and dad fight. You know. <laughs> <laughs> or a mom and dad and dad. This is kind of a weird setup here. I, but... I was ready to pull a Jackson and walk in the other room. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to go shiver outside for a while. <laughs> That's what the dogs do. Yeah. <laughs> smart move. Not well, so smart when it's snowing. No. <laughs> True. Smart. Then I feel guilty afterwards. Well, I'm that's like, why they do it. 
Oh, like they do it. They yeah. sit there and they suffer just so I feel yeah. extra guilty when I finally realize they're like, out in the snow. They're like, hey, maybe he'll make us extra bacons or give us, you know, extra treats or something because he feels it's bad. True. It's totally a, a it, it's manipulation, Heno. Don't fall for that. <laughs> <laughs> Silliness. All right, folks, we're going to wrap this up. So if you'd like to continue the conversation and we gave you a ton, a ton for you to comment on. Oh, boy. The conversation with us on. So I expect to hear from you. Who oh boy. You know what to do. You know how to reach us. You can reach us at thecrazylife.weebly.com is our website. The Crazy Life Podcast at outlook.com is our email address. If you'd like to reach me, feel free to reach out to me on Twitter at Jen's Crazy Life. That's Jen with a G. And if you'd like to hear more from me, you can also hear me on Shake the Sheets, the pop culture talk podcast that I do with my co-host, Nate. And uh, Heno, how about you? How can they reach you? You can find me on Twitter at Ida Heno. Find me on Facebook, Facebook Messenger, Heno Heiter, and Just Slimo on Instagram or my Heno too. <laughs> <laughs> and you listen to me on Moving Neil podcast where we just had a, a versus. It was Spaceballs versus uh, Galaxy Quest. That was really fun. And actually coming up in a couple of weeks, we finally got to podcast about the controversial movie Cuties. And it was so like I needed that cathartic release of of like of just talking about a movie that people literally don't want to see. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because of just stuff, you know, like yeah. BS. And I'm just like, it's art. Just watch it, right. you know. Like dive in and have a reaction. And I just, it yeah. was weird. And but it was so great to just finally just let it all out. And and really <laughs> so quick, be in a couple of weeks. for clarity's sake, when Heno is saying those things, because I'm I'm assuming I, I'm I'm speaking for you here, but it's like. He's not endorsing the film as far as like saying it's great. He's saying go experience it for yourself so you can form your own opinion on it. Yeah. That cuz we literally couldn't get people to come on because yeah. they refused to watch it. Yeah. Yeah, and that was it. It's like it's like it's like that no, we art should be experienced whether you well, whether it's going to give you a good reaction or a bad reaction, go yep. that's there to have a reaction. <laughs> art art is meant to make you feel something. Something. Yeah. That's why so, it's hard for a lot of people to understand it's why it's easy for some people to defend it's why it's hard for some people to defend <laughs> because or it's just, very subjective many times yeah or listen to our podcast in a couple of weeks so you don't have to watch it and we'll tell you all about it there you go that's <laughs> there listen you there have been plenty of podcasts where i've done that over the years where there's something and i'm like eh, i don't really want to watch it and i'll see someone's reviewing it and be like i'll listen to that and if they change my mind maybe i'll go watch it you know yeah. so yeah mm-hmm. well Good on Great. you. Well, Brian, how can they reach you? You can find me on Twitter at Stunami. You can find my other podcast at Salty underscore Language on Twitter or at SaltyLanguage.com. That show is not safe for work. And it's just me and my best friend, Tony, just yammering about, well, this week it was really heavy, like video games and pop culture, I think. Or heavy con- video games. Yeah, a little more than normal. So I think it's because both of us have been playing games a little more than we have in recent months. So we, we had, a, you know, more to kind of get into. Um, but yeah, so go check that out if you would. Again, not safe for work, so be careful. We have a great discussion about, you know, um, bears on there, <laughs> which was maybe my favorite thing yeah, of the week. It was, pr- it was pretty funny. Um, <laughs> so yeah, uh, probably help if I have my list in front of me. <clears throat> You can find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash group slash crazy life podcast. Uh, we're on the Tangent Bound Network, which can be found at tangentboundnetwork.com. So please go check out other shows on that network. And I feel like I'm missing a link. I got Man, I got to quit doing this. Like every week, I feel like one of the shows I do, I feel like I'm missing a link somewhere. I'm looking right at a list, though. So I, unless I'm just flying right past something. I don't know. Brian, you are the missing. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> oh, okay. oh, man. Uh, yeah, well, that was like yeah. a softball right to me. I mean, yeah, you know. it was. It was. <laughs> now all we need is a picture of, like, you know, the 
evolution of man and I'm the missing link in there, which is going to look really weird because of the height of them. And I'm not going to match the height <laughs> <laughs> of the, you know, more current man, probably. Mm-hmm. So even though I should, I'm actually close to average height. So it's, you know, it shouldn't be too weird, but I'm sure when they draw the posters, they draw those guys at like six foot two. So <laughs> just, <laughs> just to make me look shorter. Oh uh, man. Anyways, uh, you know, uh, as usual, we mentioned to you, if you need help, please reach out. I know we didn't really talk about a lot of mental health stuff here tonight, but still, if you need help, please reach out. Um, you know, we know with, like, COVID and everything, just a lot of people are just feeling in a bad way right now and whatever. So please reach out. You know, or if you're somebody or a family that, that you're not getting together, make sure, you know, try to do a Zoom call or something and, you know, still maybe hang out as a family to kind of get a little of that if you're not hanging out in person this year, you know, um, you know, just make sure you do what you can to still try to get some social interaction with people. I know it's not the same, but you know, we, again, we all, we're all having to make sacrifices and hopefully, like we said earlier, hopefully there's some light at the end of this tunnel a little bit and let's just, you know, focus on that. Man, I cannot, every time I think of light at the end of the tunnel, I think it's that dang Metallica song. Mm -hmm. Um, was it No Luck Clover, I think? It, or No Leaf Clover, that's what it is. Um, anyway, um, you know, so so there you go. And if, if you are with, I mean, I know odds are we'll have another episode up before Thanksgiving, but in, in the event we don't or whatever, or yours is earlier, you know, please, uh, you know, if, if you're at a family event and things start getting heated, try to maybe try to steer the conversation away from those hot button topics that, and we've all just talked them to death at this point. I mean, it is really just beating a dead horse. So, you know, when none of us are really going to win from it. And in fact, you know, like, because like, I just want to make sure this is on the show. Jen, I'm sorry if I made you feel bad or felt like you were attacked. I really, that was not my intention. Um, and I'm see even that, that sounds weird. Cause I'm not apologizing. Right. I, I, because I don't want it to be like, I'm sorry that you got hurt, you know, <laughs> you know, it, I know, <laughs> I know you know me well enough to know like that. I'm uh, yeah, I, I'm sorry that if it felt like I was attacking you, that wasn't my intention. I, I, I'm beyond frustrated at how many people are just taking things casually right now. And mm-hmm. I, like I said, I get it. We're all tired of it. And it's easy to start kind of, in fact, that was a topic I was going to talk about, uh, bring up to you guys at some point was I read something about what's called COVID fatigue and how it's kind of sweeping the nation. <laughs> well, world, yeah, probably. I'm sure. So anyways, like I said, I want to make sure that's on the show because I, you know, I do feel, you know, that that wasn't it, my intention at all. I, I just, you know, it, it, like I said, I'm sorry. I, I, I get caught up in too much of this stuff. Man, It's it, this has been a tough one for me to, man, I have... <laughs> I've just about slipped and cussed about four times. I think <laughs> one got by me. The other three I've caught. <laughs> just casual ones, too. Not because I'm angry or anything. Just casual. You know. Anyway, so, um, you know, and of course, again, as I, I usually say at the end of the episodes, please be kind to one another. Please, you know, if you're going to family gatherings and different stuff, please be courteous of the rules of the people's houses you're going to. Please respect the boundaries of others during this time. You know, don't force don't force hugs on people if they don't want them. <laughs> you know, spare spare your nephews. Yeah, spare your nieces. Spare yeah, your they will love you for yeah. it. <laughs> so there you go. That's 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 all I got. All right, folks. Well, go out there, be safe, and uh, enjoy enjoy your lives best of your abilities. So with that, go. Have a great week, and we'll be here next week just waiting for you.